Hi ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have a very special watch for me, actually. It's uh, Omega Chronostop. I tried to find this watch for such a long time. It's a watch I always wanted to add into my collection because, yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, Chronograph and fan of Omega. And this one is a very special model. So, well, you see, it's something strange there. When I move, you see the dial moving. But yeah, I found this, uh, this piece on eBay uh, for a good price, but you can see it's a bit rough. Uh, like you can see the pusher is almost out. It looks like it's bent, but the chronograph is working. The second end doesn't look like the color as well as uh, the original color, but let's see what we find inside. Wow, that's amazing. Like I love so much uh, Omega chronograph for that. It's like they are so beautiful. You can see there the reference number 145.009. So that's the correct case back. So we're going to remove the, the bracelet. And we're gonna start working on uh, on this piece. Like I said, I, I worked already on a, a lot of uh, Omega chronograph, but never on this uh, on this particular movement. So really looking forward to see what's uh, what's the difference. Okay, so we're gonna take the case the case clamp now, and you see, oh, this one is is broken. Well, the first part that I take out of the movement is broken. That's not a good sign. That's why the movement was moving when I was changing the the hour. So. We'll have to look for, for you see this one is, is, is good, so we'll have to look for parts uh, online, see if we can find a replacement. Okay, the dial looks good. I'm gonna align the hands to midnight, just to make sure we can uh, remove them with my uh, Presto tool there. So that's, uh, yeah, that's nice, the dial. Obviously, it's very tricky if you have a, a dial which is damaged, it's very tricky to restore. It's a very special uh, job, yeah? So the dial is in good shape, so that's quite good. Just removing the, ring which is around the movement there and this will give me access to this dial fit screw that i can uh, unscrew to be able to remove this beautiful dial and we'll store it away safely just to make sure it doesn't get damaged while we work on the rest of the of the movement we we'll use my carbon tweezer tip there because i don't want to scratch this dial which is to be fair in good shape like i said it's no not much scratches on it so that's good Okay, and I don't know what this ring around uh, there on the movement because there is no part moving, so no clue, yeah. Just remove the cannon pinion. I don't know why this black ring is around, maybe during the manufacturing process. I have no idea. Okay, so I'm going to remove the power now. Just holding the click there with a broken oiler and just re gently releasing the power. Holding the crown in my hand just slightly, just to make sure the power doesn't come off too quick. And normally we should have the balance which should, which should come to a stop there when there is actually no power in a watch. So that's the first step you need to do because when there is no power in a watch, basically after you can remove all the parts. It doesn't really matter in which order, but for sure you don't uh, run the risk of damaging the part because there is no power in, in the watch. Yeah. Okay, yeah, what I like to do is always remove the balance first. There you go. Removing the pallet, pallet fork. And you can see there at the bottom the number 865. So that's actually the caliber number for, for this movement. I already worked, you can see in my in one of my videos on a Speedmaster Mark II, which is an 861 caliber, so from the same era. But obviously it's a, a little bit more complicated. You see already on a parts compared to another chronograph, there is a lot less parts. There is only a central second chronograph. There is no minute. There is no hours. Um, so yeah, it's a much easier movement uh, for a chronograph. And actually quite a nice movement if you want to, to learn a chronograph or to start working on a chronograph. Because yes, there is a lot less parts. But there is like the main parts of, uh, of a chronograph. So I think that's great to, to, to start working on one of these movements. So what I like to do first on a chronograph is I like to remove all the springs which keep the tension in the chronograph. It's like, like on a movement, I remove the tension in the main spring to release uh, any, any strength in movement. I like to do the same on a chronograph, remove the, the, the springs around. So like that, the parts we move freely and I don't run the, the risk of damaging or of uh, parts uh, flying across the room. So yeah, that's the best way to do it. Okay, just removing there the chronograph bridge, which has only one wheel. In most of the chronograph, you will have two wheels. We have the center second, and you will have a minute wheel on most of them. So that's, uh, that's strange to work on a, on a chronograph with only one wheel. But yeah, like I said, it's uh, 
it's uh, it's nice it's easier it's uh, it's, it's simple it's uh, yeah I, I quite like it was quite quite tight so now i can remove the center chronograph wheel which we make the connected to the second of the chronograph so this is a cam you see that's a cam so it's a uh, cam uh, chronograph operated it's not a, a column wheel this is a hammer again the same the hammer is pretty simple it's only one arm normally you have two arms one for the center chronograph and one for the minutes uh, minutes uh, for, from the chronograph so yeah this is much uh, much easier but all these parts are pretty similar to other omega chronograph so like i said it's like uh, a bit easier a bit simpler but yeah you will have a lot of features that you can find on other chronograph as well so yeah it's uh, it's a nice way to 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 work on a on a simpler chronograph if you want okay so far i did not see anything wrong on a chronograph like uh, we saw like the chronograph was working, the parts are good, nothing is missing. And you see, like I actually I don't show it on a, on a camera, but I'm putting back all the screws as well on uh, on the plate, just to make sure like I don't mix the screws because the, the screws from the chronograph are all a tiny bit different. So you don't want to mix them and put them at the wrong place when you put it back together. So the safest way is to put them back at the right place where they belong. And when we'll assemble the watch, I will just remove the screw, put the part and put it back, put the screw back. So like that, for sure, I don't mix the screws. Just removing the chronograph running wheel there with uh, a version, a, a Presso tool again. It's friction mounted there, like, like a Canon pinion. Removing the spring. There is a last uh, spring there, which is actually the, the click spring. Just remove this screw first. Give me access to this, uh, to this spring. The click is actually underneath the, the three, quarter, three quarter plate there. We'll see it a bit later. Okay, so we have a, a bridge or a cog there just for the escape wheel. So that's nice. Just a, a tiny bridge with one joule. Just removing, you see the serial number there. Actually, we can easily, I did not look at it, but we can easily know the, the age of the, of the watch with Omega is pretty simple. You, you look at the chronograph, uh, the serial number, sorry, and you will see online, you will have a lot of database. I can tell you, depending on the number of your serial number, you can, you can know which year it was produced, yeah. Okay, just removing this big plate there, just gently lifting it there. And underneath, yes, we'll have a couple of, we have one, you see the click underneath? I already removed the screw as well for the, for the ratchet wheel, the crown wheel, sorry, this, uh, this is a crown wheel there. Just fell down, but it's actually att attached to the three quarter plate. Just taking out the train of wheel there with all the wheel, just checking if everything is okay. Yeah, it looks good. The ratchet and now the mainspring assembly, mainspring barrel assembly there. Just unscrewing the setting lever screw and we are moving to the dial side. We're going to disassemble the keyless work and you see on the dial side, it's pretty simple. Like there is only, only the keyless work, there is no extra part and the keyless work is pretty standard for Omega watch. So no, not much part there. Obviously we will have some chronograph. So my, uh, on my channel, I will put a link on the top right corner there for the Omega Speedmaster Mark III, where the movement is a lot more complicated with a lot more parts, uh, especially on the dial side as well. But yeah, this is nice to work on a, on a simpler uh, watch if you want. Here we go, we have all the parts out. So now we are just going to, with a piece of pegwood, clean the jewels, just to remove any uh, dried up oil or grease which are still in there. It will make the process, uh, the cleaning process more efficient. It will make it uh, easier to, to remove the oil or grease. And when it's done, I'm going to place back the balance assembly. Gorgeous balance assembly, like with this almost like uh, pink gold color with this blue hairspring, so nice, yeah. As, but I like working on Omega, the movements are as the color makes a difference here. Yeah. Okay, getting out of the click there, it's just one screw with this little click. Again, just to make sure everything gets disassembled to have a proper clean uh, in a cleaning machine later on. And again, with a piece of pegwood, you see just there is quite a lot of uh, grease, dried up grease there. Just make it lose a bit so it will be clean a bit easier when we put it in a, in a in washing machine there. Cleaning the jewel as well. 
Now we're just going to disassemble the mainspring barrel assembly. Just popping open, remove the lid there. And let's see inside. Oh, it's actually quite clean. Uh, it's, it's not bad. Like sometimes it's like very dirty, but this one is quite clean. Just removing the barrel. Just getting with the tweezer, just gently twisting it. There we go. Doesn't want to come yet. Yeah, that's it. And I'm going to remove the mainspring because yeah, you want all this part to, to be clean. And for this, obviously, they need to be removed from the, from the barrel assembly. Just go left, right, left, right, and just remove the spring gently and uh, until it come up fully. Just cleaning the pivot of all the wheel as well. With, uh, just to make sure again, we get like all the, you see it's very, very small. Like we make all the dried up oil or grease a bit uh, loosen up if you want, so that it will be easier to clean. And we put all the parts in these baskets and this will go into the cleaning machine. There we go, perfect. Now it's in a basket and this basket will go in, uh, get attached to my vintage Elma cleaning machine and all the parts will be fully clean. While the parts are getting clean, I would like to use the opportunity to talk about my patrons. So I have people supporting my channels and uh, yeah, this is make it uh, a bit more possible people uh, because this is a hobby that costs a lot of money and a lot of time. So I would like to thank my patron, Christian, Cornet, Swami, David, Ted, Michael, Stephen, uh, John, Tim, and uh, Gregory. So if you like to, to join my patrons, you can find below the, the address for the website and uh, you can support the channel in the same way. Okay, so now the parts are, are getting clean. We have we did the first stage of cleaning. Now we are doing the, the last two stages, which is the rinsing. And the last one will be the, the drying and all the parts we clean and dry so will be ready to be fully assembled back on the, on the watch. Okay, so now let's start the reassembly. We're gonna start first by the mainspring assembly, putting a bit of grease there, some 8200. So if you, if you want to know as well the grease and the tools that I'm using, I put some uh, in the description down below, some, some of the tools. I did not put everything. I cannot put everything obviously because in this hobby, like you need a lot of tools, but uh, I try to put the main ones. If you have any question, don't hesitate to put, to put it down in a comment and I will be more than happy to reply to your, to your questions. Uh, but yeah, if you if you see the grease, the tools that I'm using, they are down below in a in a comment. Okay, now I just put a new air spring there, main spring, sorry. Just bring it down gently with the with the tweezers, just going around until it sit fully flat, and there, yeah, I can remove the ring. So the blue color is mean it's a side up always, most of the time. Just putting some grease there. We're gonna put the barrel arbor. Just gently pressing it in place. There we go. Now it's nicely putting some grease again, some 8200 there on the top. I'm going to put some uh, 9104 there where we have a bit of friction between uh, the top lid there and, uh, and the harbor. And we're going to cl close the main spring assembly in this little tool there. Just make sure the lid will be pushed down. We just put a a gentle pressure on there and that's it. Okay, so next we're gonna oil the, the jewels from the balance assembly. Very important process because yeah, you want to have all the jewels fully lubricated, to make sure like the amplitude is good. So the accuracy of the watch is, uh, is, is good as well. And the parts don't wear uh, too quick. So that's why it's important to do a proper uh, service on, a watch, on your watch once in a while or else yeah, obviously the accuracy of the watch will not be good, but the worst is like the part can get damaged like because of uh, of wear. And uh, this can be very, very expensive depending on your watch, obviously. And uh, most of the time on old watches like this, it's very difficult and very expensive to find parts. So that's why you need to, to do a, a service once in a while, uh, like, if it's a, like if it's a vice, yeah. Okay, so that's it. We hold the jewel, just placing it back in the balance and we are going to close the spring there on top. You have two little arms. You just need to close with my tweezers. I need to close one inside first, one arms. You need to go underneath there. There we go. I just went underneath. And we're going to do on the other side, the other arm. There we 
Here we go. Don't, just not yet. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's underneath. The jewel is secured. We're going to do the same process on the other side where we're going to tonic clean it and uh, treat it in epilam. And obviously, the, the last step would be to, and you see there, it doesn't want to open, so you need to open it very straight or else. There we go. That's it. It's fully open now. I can grab. I can grab the jewel. Sometimes, if you don't open it straight, yeah, you don't want to use strength, and you don't want to use strength anyway on a, on a watch. Doesn't matter where, what you are doing, but uh, yeah, if it doesn't if it doesn't open, just yeah, move, and you need to pull it like straight up, and like this, uh, it will come. And you see when it doesn't want to come there, I, I could not grab it with my tweezer. So the best tool, a bit of Rodico, and there we go. Now I grab the jewel. I'm treating the palette for and escape as well in uh, in epilam. We'll uh, oil them a bit later on down the process. So that's why I treat them now in epilam so that all my parts are treated fully. We will uh, dry them after after being treated in epilam. And uh, on the palette fork and on the escape wheel, one of the steps as well in we I like to clean the pivot with a, a bit of uh, of uh, of peat wood. Just to make sure I remove like the the epilam on a, on a pivot or some of the epilam on a pivot point because the epilam is actually the treatment we're gonna oil is on the teeth uh, on the jewel for the palette fork that's why you want it to be not on a not on a pivot point. Okay, putting a drop of oil there on the stone, just right down in the middle, and put back the chaton down on the top. So two thanks everyone and supporting me on this journey. I would like to do a special giveaway. I would like to give one of my watch that I restore on the channel. Uh, so for this, uh, if I reach 10,000 subscribers before the 25th of December, I will do uh, this giveaway on the 26th. So we need to do three simple steps to enter the competition. First, you need to like this video, be a subscriber, and put a comment down below what you love about watches. And we will see on the 26th who will win this beautiful watch. And that's it. We are finishing. We finished uh, to oil the balance assembly. So I like to do this first, like that. I know my balance is fully oiled. And when I put it back later on, on the mechanism, on the movement, uh, I know it's oiled already, so it will be fully functional. Okay, so we can start to uh, reassemble now the, the movement. So first, remember the sub-assembly was like this uh, little click there on, the, on this uh, three-quarter plate. So just putting the click, putting, a, you see, a, a drop of oil before, just to make sure it can move freely. And uh, now we're going to start reassembling the main. So putting the main spring bar assembly we previously assembled, the ratchet wheel on top. Okay, and on a, on a chronograph or a watch with complication, what I like to do is obviously you assemble first like the timekeeping element of the watch. And after you will assemble the complication. And in this case, it's a, it's a chronograph. So now I put all the standard parts that you will, you will find in a three-ended watch. And uh, after we'll check if the movement is running and working properly, and later on we'll put the, the chronograph uh, complication on it. Okay, so now putting the train of wheel. So that's why I like in this hobby, you see, like, uh, obviously I'm a, I'm a watch enthusiast first, and uh, what I like is to find this, uh, this, this watch that I want to add in my collection and be able to restore them myself. Obviously, like, the watch will have a, a deeper meaning uh, if it's, rather than just buying a watch in a shop. And yeah, that's what's something that I, I really like in this, uh, in this hobby. And uh, obviously, like for example, I always wanted to have an Omega Chrono Stop because of this, uh, something very special, a very iconic, uh, iconic model from, uh, from Omega. So yeah, you have the hunting parts where you try to find the, the watch, which is obviously not in perfect condition. Uh, and you, uh, you are able to get a watch for a good price most of the time because obviously it's not perfect in perfect condition. And uh, basically, the goal after we make it will be to 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 make it like in a in a in a much better condition, uh, running perfectly. And yeah, you will have a nice watch in your collection and a watch that you restore yourself. So that's what I like in this uh, in this hobby. And I encourage everybody like uh, who like watchmaking and which is curious and want to like to tinker a bit. This is a, a great hobby to start. Uh, you can obviously start on. Uh, less complicated watches than this one. Um, but uh, yeah, and after just 
learn and learn and learn and, and, and with practice, you will get better, better and better and more confident. So yeah, after you can work on uh, more expensive and more complicated pieces. Uh, but yeah, this is something which is very rewarding if you if you like uh, if you like watches and if you like as well if you are a bit uh, a manual person uh, like you like to 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 tinker it's uh, something fantastic it's a fantastic hobby so I encourage everybody to start it uh, don't be afraid just uh, just buy a simple watch or a simple pocket watch and just start working on it with a couple of equipment at the beginning I'm pretty sure you will be uh, you, you you will find it great. Okay, so now I just assemble like the three-quarter plate with uh, the train of wheel, just putting this little cock there with the escape underneath. And we see everything is aligned, everything is moving, perfect. Just move now to the dial side, we're gonna assemble uh, the keyless work, putting a bit of uh, grease there on the, on the winding pinion. I think in, in a slot there, perfect, the clutch. So you see, like I said, on this side, it's, it's, it's very simple. Like the keyless work, its function is just uh, to be able, when you pull on the stem, or to wind the watch in this case. And the second will be obviously to do the time setting. That's it. Uh, so yeah, it's not much part compared to it's like a, a pretty standard, like like you will find as many parts as a three-handed watch from, from Omega. Uh, so yeah, it's not, it's not that complicated. So putting some uh, oil there, where I'm going to put all the wheels. Putting the yoke there, which is this long arm that come and we go straight straight to the clutch where I put the grease just before. Here we go. Just you see the clutch just sliding there is how we make the connection between the wheel, depending if you pull on a winding stem or no. Just a spring there because obviously the the clutch, the the yoke, sorry, need to be uh, need to be need to have some tension. You see, holding the spring with a plastic stick there and with another tweezer. There we go, putting it in place. That's a very strong spring. It's one of the strongest spring on a on a watch. So that's why you always want when you remove it or when you want to put it on. It's very good practice just to to keep it in place with one. Uh, uh, tweezer or one uh, one plastic stick or piece of wood and with another uh, tweezer just to put it in place or just take it out of place. That's a, a good practice. Okay, cannon pinion, friction mounted, yeah, go in place. Always like to put it before the minute wheel and now I put the minute wheel. And we have all the parts there so we can put the setting lever spring there that come on the top and cover all these parts. The two screws that will secure this uh, setting lever spring. You see the nice finish as well on the surface. It's like a bit of uh, sunburst, but like a very big sunburst on uh, on on this side. It's really nice. Like I really like the the Omega for that. When you work on them, the movement is always always nice to work. Obviously on a nicer movement. Uh, it's more pleasing to the high when you when you work on it. Uh, so yeah, and you can see there everything is working, everything is turning. So the keyless work is fully functional, perfect. Just need to remove now the excess of grease. There, perfect. It's clean. We can move back to the other side. We're gonna put the spring there, which you remember for the click, which is underneath, which you just assemble under under the three quarter plate. There is this big screw there that come and keep the spring in place. Now we can put the pallet fork. Pallet fork, here we go, on the bottom jewel there, and we're gonna put the pallet fork bridge there on the top with the jewels. So like we did on the bottom, we'll have to do the same thing on the top. We'll have to align, align, the, align the pallet fork in the jewel. Just make sure it rotates so for this you see just put a bit of pressure on it just move it around and up you saw it just sit down and just checking now yeah it looks like it's moving up at the left right so the move up down so the fork is in place the pallet fork is in place so when it is we can put the screws go putting the two screws there in place and 
a bit of a wine and we should be able to see if the power is coming to the pallet fork. That's the first step to make sure everything is fine. Yes, you see clicking. That's a very good sign. That's where, what, what you want to see. The power is coming to the pallet fork, so that's good news. Just going to lubricate all the pivot points. So first on this side, lubricating the jewels. You see there, this jewel with uh, extended pivot where we're going to put the, the chronograph driving wheel a bit later on. And now the moment of truth, we're going to put back the balance assembly and see if the watch wants to start or no. Just rotating it slightly, just to put... There we go. Now just trying to align it, just very gently pushing it in place. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yes, it just started. Now I'm just pressing it down very slowly until it's fully in place. Secure it with a screw. There we go. And now it's done. So the movement is working. So we know it's working. So we can uh, move on, on to the complication, which is a chronograph. So I remove the power because I don't like to have the balance uh, assembly running when I put the chronograph. It's just safer because if there is a part falling into the the balance, you can uh, run the risk of damaging the hairspring. So I remove the power before starting uh, assembling the chronograph. Uh, and now I'm assembling all the part of the chronograph. So this part here yeah, is a spring, actually, like this uh, arc shape. So that way I put a bit of, uh, of grease. And uh, all these parts are will be linked together there. And uh, they will be linked to the operating arms that we we'll put a bit later on. And that will actually activate the cam uh, to, to start or stop the chronograph. So all of this need to be lubricated properly. Putting the screw there just to make sure the parts stay together. So there, there is still no tension, but as soon as we are going to put the operating arm there, so putting some grease there, the springs that go underneath, that will go underneath this arm, just need to make sure we put it first. You see there, oh, I'm going to use just this to keep it in place. And with the tweezer, we're going to just, there we go. Now, now it's in position. Lubricating all the pivot point there before we put uh, before we put the parts, and this is a bit of a tricky operation on the Omega chronograph because you want to pull these parts, but like the 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 triangle shape there, so you need to pull like on this quite a lot of tension there, which is on the spring. You need to pull and push at the same time this part down until it fall in place. There we go. Now it's in place. And I can release the tension. Perfect. Now it's in place. Putting a bit of grease there where we you see where we have this pointy hand. Because yeah, this will see a lot of friction. So I use like uh, high viscosity grease. Um, so yeah, on all the parts I see a lot of uh, a lot of friction. Better to use better to use a grease. Putting the hammer there. So same, you see underneath with your oiler, there is this little spring there, just holding the spring and placing the hammer with my tweezers on the pivot point there. There we go, perfect. I release the spring on it. Just again, secure it with the screw. And you see, I remove, you don't see it on the camera, but I just remove the screw before putting the parts. So like that, like I said at the beginning when we disassemble, I did not run the risk when we wash the parts of... Uh, using the wrong screw. Just pressing down now the running chronograph wheel. There we go, just press it in place. Putting the cam, so that's uh, the brain if you want, I like to call it the brain of the chronograph. That's why we, when it move, we make everything rotate, it will, it will rotate and it will actuate everything. So for example, release a break. Uh, when, you, when you want to reset, it will release the hammer, so like this is all the part which is activating more all the all the different parts from your chronograph. Okay, putting some lubricating all the parts with grease with oil, and when it's done, you can put the screw there, which is uh, keeping the clutch in place. Okay, just putting some lubrication there. You see, on this extended like very long pivot from the chronograph uh, wheel. 
just lubricating, lubricating like the cam there. This is the cam, so the arch shake cam, that's where the hammer will come and hit the the wheel there on this on this area. And it will always go back to the flat surface. So that's why when you reset the chronograph, it will always reset to the same position, to the flat surface. Uh, and this is a function of the cam. And you want it to be very well lubricated because when you want to hit, when the hammer hits it, you don't want to have any friction and it gets stuck at one point. You always want it to go back to the same position, which is a zero position after when we will install the the chronograph second. And this is a hammer. Putting the putting the hammer in place. There we go. Just make sure it's in in position. Just gently moving it around. And when it is. So you see I'm moving the cam in the right position as well, just to make sure I'm able to lower it down. And when it is in position, you see there, and when it come, you see, up, oh, it come and hit the wheel and put it to the flat surface of the arch shake cam. And this is a zero position for your chronograph. Okay, so now we're gonna put the clutch assembly there. So the clutch assembly basically is where we make the connection between the movement, uh, where you have the train of wheel, and the center second from the, for your chronograph. And like on a car, the clutch can be engaged or disengaged. And that's what we make run the chronograph or stop the chronograph when it's not engaged. Um, so yeah, that's why it's called the clutch. And you see this wheel, uh, which is in the middle between the two big wheels. It will come in contact or come off contact from the, from the chronograph. We see there a bit later on when we we'll, uh, when we we'll test the chronograph function. Okay, so when we disassemble, remember, we remove first the spring. So it means that the last part that we go on, uh, go on the movement will be the spring. So putting now the tension on the, on the movement, putting the different spring around and uh, oiling them and greasing them properly as well as it should be. Cleaning the excess uh, grease or oil as well if you put a bit too much. Putting there, you will see I'm going to put, this is a spring for the hammer. So when obviously we will reset, I will come and make the hammer hit the chronograph wheel to, to reset it. There, I'm just arming it in position. Perfect. And there, look, look at the wheel. We come in, come in contact and the, and the chronograph wheel is moving. And now when I stop, come off contact, boom, it's off, off contact. And at the same time, you see the hammer come and reset. So this is a very special function from this chronograph. When you stop it, it will automatically reset. Normally on a, on, a, on, a, on a chronograph, you will have two pusher, one to start and stop the chronograph and one to reset. But on this one, it's a very special movement. Like I said, it's only one button, one pusher, and you don't have a minute. So it's only stop and uh, start, sorry. And when you stop, it's always, it always does the reset at the same time. Okay, so now that the chronograph uh, is fully assembled and the movement is fully assembled, we can put back the dial. Just make sure it's aligned in a dial fit uh, screw hole. And now I can put the dial fit screw and the movement and the dial is secured. I'm gonna put uh, our hand first. Doesn't really matter where you put it because there is no, there is no date. So you don't need to align it uh, after a day jump or anything. Now I'm aligning to midnight because that's matter when you put the minute hand, you want uh, both hands to be alight at midnight or any other hour. You can align it at six o'clock or four o'clock if you want, but you need to be aligned on an hour to make sure like the hand will point the right direction and the minute hand will not be disaligned compared to the hour hand. Now it's aligned to midnight. I can press it in place. There we go. Just checking the hand are not touching each other or not touching the die when I'm moving. Yeah, that looks good. And we can put now the chronograph uh, uh, chronograph hand. So yeah, this is not the original color from the from the chronograph. I tried to look some uh, hands. It's very difficult to find and very expensive. So I decided to leave it. Maybe one day I will uh, find one and I will just take it apart and just change, uh, change the hand. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't find. It's, you see, that's what I told you sometime on Vintage uh, Chronograph, on Vintage Watch. It can be very tricky to find the parts um, or sometimes you need to be really patient. But for now, I will leave this hand even if it's not perfect. And maybe one day I will find a good deal on a, on a, on a hand and uh, I will change it. 
Okay, so now we move on a, on a case and you remember the, the pusher was a bit weird. It was almost off. It looks like it was bent. So I'm just going to remove it to see what's going on there. Just removing the screw that keeps the pusher in place. We'll just take it out there. So that's the pusher. The screw is here. So the pusher already is damaged. Oh, and the screw is fully bent. And the pusher is like on the side, it's like, like fully damaged. I cannot like uh, fix it. So what I will do, I probably look uh, for, for a new set and I, I managed to find a new set actually for, for a good price. You know, find a hand, but I found a pusher. It was not easy, but uh, I found I found one in a, on a good price. So we put a, a new one a bit uh, later on. But for now, we're going to clean all the parts in a ultrasonic machine just to make sure they are nice and clean. And uh, all the, the dirt and uh, even if it was not bad, everything is removed. Okay, so there is a special tool there to remove like the pusher. So you see now I'm, I'm screwing this uh, part, that, which is in a case, which is uh, threaded. So that's the old pusher. We go, and now that's a new one. So I got a, a full uh, full assembly. So I'm changing everything uh, when I'm at it. Obviously everything will be new. So we go. now I put the new parts in the case. Just tiny, tighten it a bit slightly. And this is a new pusher with the spring. So putting the spring there. Gonna put it on the tube there. Now just pressing it down, and with my finger I will hold the hold the pusher in place, and we will put back the the new screw. So you see this one is is not bent. It's in it's in a perfect condition. There we go, and uh, with a screwdriver gonna. Screw the while holding the pusher. So this is a bit of a tricky operation because you have to keep everything with one end and screw with the other one. But yeah, that's it. It's in place. And the pusher there, you see, perfectly working, looking much better with uh, with a new pusher. Okay, just blowing a bit on a dial just to remove any any dust. And there we go. I just put a new crystal as well. That's Perfect, like it's looking so much better, so nice when you put a new crystal on the watch with no scratch or no discoloration. And this beautiful movement in this uh, in this case. Just placing back now the winding stem, which is a bit weird, which is offset as well. It's not like at the three o'clock position. It's like around like a four o'clock position. Putting back the spacer ring there just to make sure the movement stay nicely centered in a, in the case. And you remember it was this uh, clamp that was broken. I managed to find one online as well. So the movement will be uh, properly secure with the two clamp fully in position. So that's the uh, first one. And you see the movement will lift up gently when we put the, when we screw the, the two clamps. It will be in a groove, like the clamp is going in a groove inside the case. And putting the second one there. And that's it. The movement is in place. So we're going to put a new uh, a new gasket just to make sure like the movement is uh, as what as as what approved as it as it could because yeah it's uh, it's not a diving watch but yeah it's better to have it uh, like obviously if you wash your hand or when you if it's raining outside or anything can be exposed to moisture so you want it to have it uh, as uh, water tight as possible. So go just putting a bit of the seal there. But I greased a bit before. And that's it. We can close the watch now. Close the watch. We're going to put a new strap and see uh, which results we are getting on a, on a time grapher. So on a time grapher, when the, when the watch is settled down, it's running around like uh, zero. And the amplitude is around 280 uh, to 270. So that's quite good. And the bit error as well, it's at 0.1, so that's uh, perfect. I'm very pleased with the result on, uh, on this watch. It's running, uh, it's running a lot better. Uh, yeah, and uh, quite accurate with a good amplitude. And this is the fin final product, the uh, final, final result of, of the watch with, uh, with a new strap. And this is a chronograph, just starting this beautiful chronograph. And you cannot hear or you cannot feel, but it's so smooth as well to operate with a nice click. 
and this is when you stop it and reset it. Hope you like the, the video, hope you like the restoration and I see you next time for my uh, next project. Bye bye.